Hi guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah. Welcome back to my channel. Super excited um, to embark on a new project that I've got an idea for. Now, I don't know whether this is going to work at all, I have to say. Um, so, yep, I may be here kind of wishing I hadn't started this or, you know, who knows, maybe this is not going to pan out at all. But um, if you followed along recently, I very recently made a glue book junk journal, which was basically an altered book which had um, just sort of, you know, say 10 pages decorated in a glue book style and the rest was painted and left plain for journaling. So I had lots of people say that they would really love to do um, a glue book again and I have got some books behind me ready to do another glue book. But before I did that, I just couldn't rid myself of um, a kind of, you know, wanting to try something else. So what I've got here is a start of a folio, basically. And it's quite a small folio. I normally make them from bigger envelopes than these. So these are just those five by seven sort of card making style envelopes. And all I've done is married it with some of my food coloured papers. So, you know, it's all just green and brown at the moment. And I want to try doing a glue book folio. As I say, I do not know whether this is going to work. It may look shocking and rubbish, but you know, you don't know unless you try, do you? And you know, I just couldn't get the um, feeling out of my head. So I've, you know, got to come along and try it. So the actual folio itself, obviously you can see, I mean, I just kind of started making this yesterday and I was going to do a complete um, folio before actually, you know, coming on to try this. But to be honest, it would take me so long to make it that I just thought all the time I'm then making it, I can't be filming. So it will end up going on for weeks and weeks. So I just thought I would come on and, you know, do it with you guys now. So I will do another one of these online or, you know, on camera at another time if it if it works out well i mean i have to be truthful all my folios are very different normally i don't think many of them have been done identically because each time i do one you know i maybe just slot things in a different way and you know think oh i'm going to do that now um so again no rules or anything with the folios but all i've done so far is i glued two envelopes together in the crafty cat style so they're there then I've cut one of them at the top to create a large pocket. I took another envelope and sealed it down and folded it over and you've got then two pockets here. I glued a flap here so that just folds down. Then I glued another envelope here onto the side. Just, you know, just a plain envelope. And then I glued another envelope folding out the other way onto the side of that. So, so far I've used one, two, three, four, five envelopes. And then here I've produced a pocket with just some more of that food coloured paper that just folds out like a sort of foldy opening. So that's all there is, you know, so far to my folio. It probably will close like that because that seems to be the you know, the bulky piece that needs to go in there. That's how it naturally seems to want to fold. Um, so yeah, I thought that we could come along and just have a, a go at making some sort of glue book folio. Um, you know, and like I say, I have no idea how this is going to pan out. It may look shocking, but let's try it. So what I've done, first of all, I have created a new glue book favourites um, because again I know that you know lots of people really enjoyed my glue book favourites sets one two and three which I did with the glue book and I know that several people had asked me could I create some more so this one here is again it's a five page download and again this has been printed at full size so let me just raise my tripod slightly to fit it all in and these I have done massive images because you know for me glue book things I like them really big and really um yeah really big obviously when you print these I mean you could print them two to a page you could print them four to a page so you can shrink them down you don't have to leave your images this big but I happen to quite like them you know making a big impact on the page so this is the first page here so you've got some vintage images you've got some flowers there um you know journaling cards however you wanted to use them 
This is the second page. You've got these gorgeous seed packets and then you've got um, a variety of fussy cut images there. Love the vibrant colours of this set. Then here you've got, again, some more fussy cut images, again, in quite large size. You've got lots of pears and strawberries. You've got some boots. You've got the soldier. You know, really nice eclectic mix of things. Um, because I found that that's what worked best in my last glue book was, you know, I liked having the eclectic mix of things. So again, on this page, you've got more um, fussy cut elements. You've got some daffodil heads. You've got some ladybirds here. Again, another soldier in a slightly bigger size. Um, another strawberry, the um, rosebud there. And again, a couple more pieces that could be used either as backgrounds or journaling cards, depending on, you know, how you want to use it. And then the final page here, again, you've got another soldier. I think he's slightly bigger again. Um, and another boot. Some of the boots are one way round, some the other. Um, another journaling card. And again, the strawberries, the daffodil heads and some rose heads here. A sort of bunch of strawberries here and some pears and some roses. So you've got quite a good mixture of things. And I think the colours in this, um, you know, this set of Bluebook favourites, they're all really quite nice, vibrant and somehow somehow quite coordinating colours. So hopefully you've got quite a nice range. I'm working currently on some more glue book favourites, um, but I haven't quite finished those at this point. So, uh, you know, I'll show them when, when I get round to sort of finishing then. Um, so yeah, I thought we could start with these, obviously. Um, and then I'm going to just take some images to marry these with. Now, if you watch my glue book favorite, uh, glue book, sorry, glue book junk journal <laughs> series or, you know, a few videos before, I tended to mix things like um, black and white images or maybe kids book images with other sort of vintage images. So I'm just going to try and do that same eclectic mix of things again. So what I've got here is that lovely coffee table book. This is that um, history of the English house. Um, but I mean, you know, you could use any book that you've got at all. So I'm just going to go through and find an image that I think would be really nice as maybe like a starting point for my glue book, um, you know, folio or lap, lap book. So I'm just flicking through. Now, I would probably prefer one that's portrait rather than landscape. But obviously this book, that may be a struggle because of the nature of the pictures although I do have pictures further on of furniture not necessarily furniture sorry more architectural details which may be more portrait so like here I've got windows I mean this for instance is gorgeous isn't it yeah lots of lovely lovely images here so let's just pick one that's really nice I mean that's also really lovely uh so is that and I've got some doorways. Maybe the doorways would be good. Or perhaps I should stay, save a doorway. Perhaps we could have a doorway on the front. I've said that now. I will probably forget completely when I come to decorate the front what I've actually said. But let's try and have maybe a window. So, I mean, this is quite nice. This kind of shop front. So that's a door and a window. Okay, let's have a look. Right, I'm going to go for this one, I think, because that was the first one that just caught my eye and I just thought would be lovely. So sometimes, you know, the first thing that you spot is, is the thing, isn't it? So just torn that page out and I'm just going to cut around that. Like that. And actually what you could do is obviously cut around that whole building. So I'm just going to see how it looks and then I might decide to actually fussy cut, you know, round the actual building itself. Obviously I haven't planned this. This is very much kind of, you know, um, you know, suck it and see how things pan out. But yeah, I think probably this is going to look good actually cut around you know the building itself so just cutting that down a 
Okie dokie. Okay, well I'm about halfway through the building, so it's not been too, too terrible. Because I have to say, when I did say about doing that, I did think, oh gosh, that's going to not be really very fun to cut out, but actually it's not too bad. Okay, and then just go in. I mean, this is quite skinny, that little spire, but... Oops, come on. Okay, we're on the home stretch. There we go, right. I mean, it just adds a little something, some, sometimes, you know, not always, but if you actually cut it out, you know, to the shape, that can sometimes be a little bit more interesting, I guess, or, you know, make it look, I don't know, just somehow differently rather than a picture from a book so much. So I'm just going to have a look through my blue book favourites and see what might look good with this. So I probably should have cut out some of these first, shouldn't I? But never mind, never mind, right. So all of these are printed on their quite thick card and um, yeah, they possibly would have been better on slightly thinner card actually, but I can't remember the GSM of this, but it could be 230 or something. So, I mean, they're quite thick, to be honest. But I do love all these vibrant colours. So, for me, this project just felt very exciting because I thought, oh, I can just incorporate lots and lots of colour and, um, you know, fun stuff. So, we'll see how we get on. So, thinking a ladybug... out oh again this is yep this definitely I would have benefited from doing this first before coming on oh my gosh now I'm not intentionally sort of kiss cutting this but obviously because his legs are very very thin I am you know having no choice really but to just cut it because I think I would just end up cutting them off completely but I'm trying to close if there's such a thing close kiss cut it because sometimes when things are kiss cut they have a really huge outline don't they so just trying to be close-ish to the legs if you see what I mean so there we go I mean, to be honest, just actually thinking, could we cut the legs off? Just have a look. Do you know, I might just cut the legs off of this completely. <sighs> I'm not going to do that on this one because I've now cut around the legs. So let's cut this one out with the legs and then I'm going to just cut another one without the legs. And the only reason I sort of thought that suddenly was I thought, well, actually, most times when you see pictures of ladybirds, you don't really see their legs, do you? You know, it's just the ladybird itself without his legs showing, so... Yeah, I think maybe actually that would look fine. I've probably told you guys this story before, but my daughter, when she was a baby in her room, I had bought all this, what I thought was absolutely beautiful bedding with all these ladybirds. On it and I got it from the States um, I can't remember the company I'm afraid but they had the most amazing selection of you know nursery type bedding and obviously I thought she would absolutely love it do you know she absolutely hated it when she was kind of big enough to talk <laughs> she um, <laughs> she wouldn't sleep in there she kept on saying how the ladybirds were really big and really frightened her and I mean, I know I've said this before, but she's six now. And the funny thing is we must have decorated it oh, two years ago or something when she was perhaps, you know, three and a half, four, something like that. And now it's pink and unicorns, you know, much more her thing. But she still says it now, how she found the ladybirds so terrifying because there was one kind of hung, it's not hung above her cot, but sort of to the side of her cot. And I'd put the, um, 
you know, the comforter, the baby comforter blanket thing hung on the wall on a, um, what's the word? Like a broom handle kind of thing. It looked nice. It sounds terrible, but, and, um, yeah, she still talks about it now and says, oh, the ladybird. And it was so big. It really frightened me. So yeah, she obviously did not like that at all. And <laughs> it feels like it's got her for life. So, um, I mean, we laugh about it. She doesn't sort of talk about it in a terrified way or anything like that. But I mean, the funny thing was, I obviously thought, oh, what gorgeous bedding. It's so colourful and vibrant. You know, she'll love that. But no, she didn't love it at all. I mean, actually, in hindsight, I can see what she's saying because the, you know, the ladybirds were quite big. And so actually, I can see how that would be perhaps quite scary. But obviously, you know, at the time of buying the bedding, I thought, oh, that's going to be gorgeous. She will just love it. But no, she didn't. And yeah, like I say, I can kind of see why she why she didn't. Right, now I'm just kind of laying these things out a little bit. And let's have, I think, one of the, one of the daffodils. So there, I've just noticed some white. I haven't quite cut that very well. Okay, just take that off. Right, now I'm just wondering what else to mix this with because I feel like I would quite like some text somewhere on here. I've got my um, Victorian adverts here from the book. Can't really see anything quite right on that sheet. Um, let me pull in my, again, that coffee table book and just see whether there's any sort of titles or, you know, something that would be good to have in here. Maybe from, you know, like this type of page or something. No, nothing grabbing me so far, so that's a shame. Got the staircases and things, no. Then I've got the index, that's not right either. Uh, well, this is where I'm going to decide already that actually this is not going to be quite such a good project as I'd hoped. But let's just tear this page out because maybe something here would be good. thinking if I just trim this down here right let's just move this stuff so I'm thinking if that was there I don't know whether right so I'm probably going to have to cut this I think it's just there literally just kind of fits on there and we could have the House and the stamp and the ladybird. That's quite nice, isn't it? And then oops. I'm a bit out of practice of these glue books, I think. Um, now, what else? What else could I have on there? Let's have a think. I wonder if I could do with a red stamp. Again, let me just pull my stamps in. Got these orangey red ones. It's funny, but when you look, there don't seem to be that many red stamps, actually. Well, certainly I don't feel like I've found many. Okay, so I quite like it like that. I will probably put some more things on there yet, but that's not a bad start. So let's just get my glue. And I'm just going to glue this down on here. I'll just apply my glue sort of directly to the envelope, I think. Yep. 
like that. And then I'll also apply a little bit of glue to this edge, which will be glued on as well. Okay. So just pop that down there. Like that. Move it up slightly. Like that. Right, let me move these bits here. There's my glue spreader. I'll just spread that out. Okay, and I'm just going to trim around this. I know I've said before, but I mean, I just find it much easier to trim around rather than try to cut my piece to size because I'm just going to muck it up. If I try and cut it to size, you know, I'm going to cut it too small or, you know, too short or too crooked so it's just easier I think to just do the cutting you know once it's actually in its place I think but again I mean that's just me and you know obviously everyone has their own methods don't they so do things as you know as you find works for you best so I'm thinking that over there now let me just put these bits back right so we're going to have the house down here the ladybird here now I also had some really beautiful blue butterflies in with these printables so I'm thinking they might look good on here so let's just let's cut this out and then this I don't know whether this is going to look good it might look again it might look rubbish but let's just try it you can but try okay yeah i just thought this would be a fun different way to do a glue book um as i say i may may live to regret it and think well this just does not work at all I mean, doesn't that look lovely, though, with that um, journaling card in there? It just, you know, I don't know, just looks gorgeous, those colours. Now, I had initially thought perhaps I'll glue that in there. I'm not so sure now. I mean, I guess I could glue it on the other side. So, yeah, I probably just have this, you know, tucked in so as it can pull out, so as it's a journaling piece. Obviously, I will need to put some stuff, you know, glue book style you know here in this this portion I mean I've got the strawberries so maybe they would look quite good I mean yeah I had such a lot of fun doing that glue book that I did and um, I have been looking forward to doing another and as I say, I've got a couple of books that I managed to pick up that would be just perfect for it. And then literally the other night, this idea just came into my head and you know what it's like. I just can rid myself of the idea. So um, I thought, well, I'm going to have to do this because otherwise it's just going to keep on, you know, popping into my mind. So, uh, yeah, I'm just giving it a try. But as I say, I mean, this might be an epic fail and not really work at all but we'll see I mean those strawberries are quite nice oh that is really nice yeah I really like how that looks okay so we're going to have that 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 still feeling something here because I'm not necessarily over keen on the brown showing I thought the brown would look great but it doesn't I've got these blue butterflies so let's just cut them down I don't know whether I'm going to like these because it may seem like it's a different dimension you know color wise because I'm loving all that red and green together I mean, red and green just always conjures up images of Christmas, doesn't it? But for some reason, that's working fine and isn't bringing images of Christmas to mind. Which normally, as soon as I see red and green together, I'm, oh, Christmas, Christmas. 
Okay. Oops. Oh, that's quite striking, isn't it? Yeah, I think that is quite striking. Right, so I'm going to start off by, I think, pop the strawberries down. I mean, if you watched my previous one of the glue book, I mean, as I say, that was my first, you know, my first stab at a sort of glue book style piece. And, you know, the thing that I kind of took from that was just that you can use anything at all that, you know, you fancy. And actually, sometimes the more eclectic and weird and wonderful, the better. Um, you know, it actually kind of just seemed to lend itself to sort of the more weird and wonderful the better things seem to look um and so from that point of view as well i think what a fantastic way to use up some of the really precious book images that we have that you know we don't necessarily kind of use in our journals because maybe they're not quite you know quite right for what we're working on um but it's kind of a great way to actually be able to use them, I think, in in a glue book style. Right, now I need to find something for here because I'm struggling a little bit with that. With that corner, so... Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder whether I could... Oh, I don't know whether I'm going to manage to do this. Let's just tear this out. And for some reason, as you know, I always am a big fan of tearing rather than cutting. But I did notice that for my glue book, I really stuck with cutting rather than gluing, uh, rather than tearing. Now, whether that's the thing, I don't know. Whether that was just a one-off, I don't know that either. But it would be quite interesting to see whether, you know, that seems to be a thing. Right. And then, yeah just see how this would be because I don't necessarily want that join all that visible okay right let's cut this in a bit and I'm just going to cut that round just trim that at the bottom okay right let's Try again. Okay, right, let me just trim this here so as it's not getting caught when it closes. And then we'd have the house here. Yeah, that's much better, isn't it? Because it's not really so visible now on the join. So let's just glue this piece down. Okay, and then we're just going to have the house here. Okay. Oops, oh, that skinny spire. Bit there, one along here. Okie dokie, and pop that down there like that. So again, let me just grab my dry wipe so that I can just, you know, get any excess glue off as it's pressing down. Okay. And then my lovely stamp, just going to put that there. And then the ladybird there. That looks really nice, doesn't it? And, you know, again, I mean, I'm not saying that this page is finished. I may come back and put some more things on that page. Um, but it's just a sort of first, first stab. So that was a little stamped piece that was just kind of, again, out the corner of my eye. I just glimpsed it and thought, oh, perhaps that would be good. This is actually on chipboard. So not ideal because obviously my other pieces, they're all, you know, just on paper. So 
but I'm just having a look through because I've got my numbers here. So I'm just wondering whether, I, for some reason I thought something blue would look good on there, but actually it looks awful. I don't know why I was thinking blue because of course there wasn't any other blue. It was because I was looking at the butterfly and I thought, oh, something else that blue would be good. Um, and then for some reason I then started picking in, you know, royal blue, which of course that wasn't very good. Um, just having a look through. Could, again, I could do with printing off some more of my numbers because I'm pretty sure I have got some numbers similar colour to that. But yeah, I don't know whether... No, I can't really see any at the moment. Not this. Well, perhaps when we put them in, we'll paper clip a few bits together. So, right, in the first instance, I'm going to pop this stamp down. Just there. And then my little ladybird. I mean, we tend to call them ladybirds over here, and I know that in other places they call them ladybugs. I don't really know what the correct terminology is. So, um, yeah, ladybird, ladybug, you know, whatever. Whatever you use to pronounce that. You know, they're the ones that, obviously, my daughter was terrified of in her bedroom. <laughs> that I terrorised my daughter with, but, um, yeah. I mean, I wonder how long she felt frightened, <laughs> you know, before she could speak, whether she was kind of in there terrified of them for years or, um, you know, whether she didn't feel terrified at first, I don't know. Sorry, I just put this in because it was just to the side and I thought, oh, perhaps that would look good, but yeah, probably not. So yeah, I'm thinking this here. So let's just go over to the facing page. And again, so I've got these bits here. And let's just cut this down. I'm just going to paper clip these two together, the journaling cards, because I just want to see how these would look. You know, whether it's now looking really awful and clashy. Because, you know, I thought it would look really great and it might look really awful. So, no, yeah, I quite like how that looks. And if we take this off and just have the flowers, it would look like that, which again, I love that too. Right, okay, so I, I will come back to, to that. So I'm going to glue this butterfly down here and I'm going to glue it flat. I don't know why. I don't know whether that's a rule of a glue book or whether that's my interpretation of a glue book, but for some reason, when I did my glue book before, all of my pieces were flat. So in a junk journal, generally, I often glue the butterfly just down the middle and have its wings flapping. I don't know why, but for me, it feels like for a glue book, it should all be glued flat. Now, yeah, I'm sure there's no rules and, you know, that's not necessarily a thing. That's just, in my mind, it kind of says glue book equals flat. But yeah, I'm sure that's just something that I have invented and I'm sure that's not the case at all. Let me know below if you, if you think that's a thing. I don't know whether I'm just literally making that up completely. And it's probably, you know, not a thing at all. Oops, I've just noticed that my page here is just slightly hanging over. And obviously it's a very thin page, so it's just a little bit vulnerable, which that's a bit of a shame. Hmm because I hadn't really noticed that, obviously, previously. So just going to glue that down as much as I can. But yeah, that may be just a, a vulnerable spot now. Okay, so on the facing page now, as I say, I've got these couple of bits here, which I think are quite nice, but it probably would be quite nice to pull something else in as well from maybe a book of something. So let me stand up and look down and see how this is coming along. We've also got this little slither here, which could probably again take something, you know, being glued there. 
So I'm just having a quick look through what I've got beside me in terms of books and things. I've got this one, which is Nursery Rhymes. Oh my gosh, doesn't this look good? Because this page is very in keeping with these colours, isn't it? Let me tear this out. So this is one of just those, you know, like, talking of ladybirds, um, a ladybird book. It's called Nursery Rhymes, a second ladybird book of Nursery Rhymes, it's called. Let's just have a double check. I can remember having this book as a child. This exact book, well, not this copy, but this exact book because all of these pictures I can remember so much oh and you know they just all go fantastically with this particular glue book I'm now thinking would I be better off on this page having something like this there and I wonder if I could have this as a sort of foldy flap I mean, this is obviously going to be super colour clashy and, you know, super departure from matchy matchy. I mean, it, seriously, it couldn't be any less matchy matchy really than it's going to be. But, you know, that might be might be a nice thing. Yeah. Mm, let me just check. Because as I went through the book, I thought, oh, there were several pictures that I thought would actually be brilliant on this page. This was another one that I thought would be great. I hope I don't tear this now. Especially while I'm filming. Oops. Okay, there's that one. Oh, well, that's lovely, isn't it? And what's that other one that I thought? As I flicked through, there was another one that really caught my eye. I think was the other one that caught my eye. Okay, well they're all really good, aren't they? But actually probably this one less so, so. Yeah, do you know, I'm wondering about that now. Yeah, so I may have to do that. So what I would do is, I think, trim it down this side in particular because, of course, I'm going to cut into these ladies. I will cut that side down a little bit because, of course, where I've torn that out. But we'll just see how it goes. I'll just cut that down a bit and then I'm going to cut it down quite a bit here. see how that looks okay so I could have that I could have it up there and I'm just thinking I could have a couple of like some of these or something on there look um hmm Decisions, decisions again. Right, let's have another look. Now, again, I'm wondering whether I could have one of these ladybirds somewhere on there because um, maybe that would go quite well. I think these ladybirds are going to be really super fun to use in this. So I'm just cutting his legs straight off now. No messing about, they're just gone. I will keep his little antenna things, but yeah, everything else, I'm just trimming it off. Okie dokie. Yeah, I mean, actually in hindsight, maybe I'm biting off more than I can chew with this, um, <laughs> with this lap book. Maybe it's going to be more difficult than I anticipated, or maybe it's just going to turn out completely clashy and awful. Um, but, you know, hopefully it's going to be a fun process regardless. And, you know, that's 
that's what it's all about after all isn't it so let's get rid of that oh the ladybird looks a bit weird on there actually um right let me again just have a look through i am going to have to print some more numbers because this is so annoying every time that I come to reach in and find that I don't have the ones that I would like. Not that. Oops. Got a book plate, made its way in with the numbers for some reason. What are these? Nope, they're not the right colours. Um, got a green one. just always the way isn't it you've got everything but the one that you need mm -hmm. let's get rid of all of these out of the way otherwise we're just like swimming in numbers here yeah I mean I definitely would like this as a little foldy flap Perhaps we'll just have it like that. What do you think? Ah, oh, it's a tough, tough, tough decision, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to go with that. And, you know, we can always fill in those edges and gaps and things should we want to. So, you know, we might come back and do some finishing touches. But, yeah, just going to go for this now. Okie dokie. So just turn that over and then just pop that down. So like that and I'll just bring it down slightly. Okay, get my glue spreader wherever I've now put that. Oops, where have I put that? I mean this also, this is quite a departure for me because um, so far I think think so far every time I've done a folio they've been massive um you know really quite big so this is quite different for me because it's obviously very you know it's not very small it's not like a mini journal or anything but it's quite small and obviously these are big images and things so you know that also is another little bit of a um you know something else I guess to you know that I'm sort of now learning with or you know that I wouldn't normally be using so perhaps we'll have that like that down there yeah I quite like that I think so we'll just pop the number down like that and then I'll need to just create a little flap for this. So I will just use my, you know, for this, I'll just use this same um, green food color paper probably to create that, unless I want to use the envelope type color. So I'll have to have to decide for that as well. So there we go. Okay. Right, well I'm quite liking how that's looking so far. Now I haven't inked anything up and I didn't ink anything up I think in my glue book um, either. I don't know whether I will stick with not inking because obviously now this side is glaring white which you know it would possibly look nicer not glaring white. Um, so that may kind of sway me to to ink after all. Now, it's just kind of glancing around at my desk and obviously I've got this coffee dyed paper. Because I was going to go with the green, but actually I had this just literally, you know, up there floating on my desk and just again, it caught my eye. And I'm just wondering if I cut this down. I think actually that looks better than the green. So I'm going to probably struggle, probably struggle to make a little fold here, but let's give it a try. So, right. 
Yeah, I'm going to pop it this way up, I think. Like that. Oops, hopefully move that up a bit. Oops, like that. And again, just, you know, squeeze out any excess glue from the edges. So this one is stuck just on three sides, so it's kind of a side pocket. And then all I'm going to do is hopefully fold a little flap down the side and then it can just overhang there. So again, let me just squash this side down. And again, you know, this is quite thick card. I couldn't tell you what GSM because obviously it's just floating on my desk, but it's possibly 200 GSM or something. So it's quite thick. Yeah, I quite like that. So I'm just going to attach this by just gluing here like that. And then this kind of, you know, this was like two things dealt with really because I've obviously created the flap now and I've overcome the fact that this was white on the back. You know, so it's worked as a sort of double, you know, double bonus, I guess. So that's that one. Okay. There we go, and just then again get any excess glue out like that. Okay, and do we want anything obviously stuck, you know, here that just then, you know, brings it all together quite nicely. So where did I put that ladybug? Okay, just moving my stuff because I'm hoping that this is all fitting on the screen. Although this is a small folio, strangely enough, it seems to be taking up quite a lot of room. So maybe we'll have the ladybug there. I wonder if we could have one of the small numbers or something. I mean, that number's pretty, pretty small compared to the ladybird, which is maybe a bit strange. Hmm. I wonder if we'll have the number out here. Maybe up there. Okay, let's just have that there. Okay, so that's just literally slid, uh, slid in, you know, just really slightly under that you know, what's effectively that pocket. So, okay, so we have like a double double pocket going on there. And again, I can just paper clip this down to hold that closed. Oops. Oh my gosh, she says. That's if I can even clip the clip on. There we go, like that. Now I'm still debating whether I need something else over here. So yeah, I might come back to that and um, see if it needs anything else in there. But I think that's quite a nice start, really. Um, I hope that you like the concept of a glue book lap, lap book. It's a bit of a mouthful, so maybe we'll call it a glue book folio. Um, I just thought it would be something quite fun and different to do. Um, a different take on the glue book and a different take on the laptop, uh, the lap, <laughs> lap book. Um, so I hope that you like the concept and hopefully you'll join me for the next one. So thank you so much for watching and see you again soon. Thanks then. Bye.